Welcome to our weekly market review brought to you by ETM Analytics and, and Treasury One. I'm joined by uh, Treasury One's currency strategist, Andre Salia. Andre, it is a week where monetary policy will be the dominant theme. We see the Fed coming out with their latest decision, the Bank of England and the Bank of Japan. But uh, let's start with the big one. Obviously, that will be on Wednesday when the Federal Reserve will make its announcement. If we can just walk it back a little bit, because we saw the PCE core deflator coming out on Friday. It was steady in June as we kind of expected it to be. And although spending continued to, uh, to, to grow, what was interesting is that that income growth slowed more rapidly. Now, when you couple a situation like that with a cooling labor market, we can expect to, uh, consumption to ease further in the coming months. And this really will just support the argument for the Fed to cut rates, perhaps only in September, so not this week. But the question is, can we see Powell be more dovish in the accompanying statement coming out on, on, on Wednesday? Good morning to everybody. Yes, uh, a week of monetary policy. Damn, we don't have one for the South African side. It would have been interesting. The economy in America is getting headwinds. All the figures point to that. So can we see that dovishness from the uh, Fed? Yes, I think we could. I wouldn't even be surprised if he surprises us uh, because sure. one must keep in mind that these people on their monetary policy meetings is not looking backwards, they're looking forwards. Mm. I said last week and I'll say it again, the one that makes me very optimistic is the month on month figures that came out in two consecutive months now at point one. And at the back end, we obviously have higher figures. So if forward looking, they anticipate that it could be a 0.1 or a zero, or maybe a small negative with a bigger one falling out, we could see their forward looking PCE coming down quite rapidly. And that's what they would be looking at. And I think the last thing that they would want is uh, an economy that gets too much headwinds and falls behind too much. So I wouldn't be surprised, but it's only a 30% chance. 70% that nothing happens, but from the meetings onwards, the percentage of the likelihood of a cut increases continuously and going over the 50% for the September month. So I definitely think in his speech, in his press conference, he's going to give us a bit of an indication and fly like a dove. I think um, what might keep the surprise at bay might be some of the uncertainty baked in around the US elections. Things are a bit crazy and it's go only going to get worse as we head into November. But the other policy decision coming out is from the Bank of England. Uh, theirs will be on Thursday. Their scenario looking a little bit different to the Fed. The market seems split, perhaps leaning more to 60% for a 25 basis point cut. So they might be leading the pack up, uh, the pack on this. And, you know, it seems like markets are expecting that this uh, decision on Thursday could be the start of some gradual cuts coming from the UK. Yes, I think uh, with the change in government, with the change in everything there and the optimism that flies around in the UK, I wouldn't be surprised. So I think 25 basis points is most probably on the cards for us, uh, inked in. And on the other side of the globe, when we go to Japan, Yes, there we are certainly hoping that they will increase their interest rates. Mm. Uh, I don't think that will be a 25 basis points or something, but, uh, you know, even if we can get 10 or 15 basis points, <laughs> that would be fantastic. That would be something in the right direction. So interesting yeah. what happens is, uh, you know, on the one side of the globe, you want interest rates to go down. On the other side of the globe, uh, you want them to go up. Uh, but yes, a very, very interesting week and a week that we have to watch very closely. Uh, and that's most probably why, you know, we didn't put up a lot of graphs here today or anything, because we don't want to look at graphs. We just want to look at 
what is happening in the world of monetary policy. Mm. And that's the key. And that's key not only to, uh, you know, supporting world economic growth, uh, but it's also key to what could happen to the value of the dollar. And what happens with the value of the dollar has got a dramatic impact on what happens to mm. the value of the South African rand. We will obviously be tracking the Bank of Japan decision because that is the oddball. And as they continue with this normalization of their policy, you know, it could, there's some scope for volatility for the higher risk currencies like the South African Rand. Um, so what are, what's the ban that we are expecting for this week's Rand? Is, is it, are we just going to take direction, I'm assuming, from the Fed and possibly the Bank of Japan? Maybe they come with a surprise and don't. And don't cut <laughs> or don't like. Yes, that would be a surprise. But <laughs> I'm, I'm quite certain of, uh, you know, what, that they will adjust on their monetary policy like the UK. Um, what could happen to the value of the RAND? What could happen to the value of the dollar? What is the bands that we're trading in? I think we could, depending on the Fed and the... Uh, flying like a dove situation uh could see a euro back to the 109 most probably slightly above the 109 mm. and that could bring the rand for us back down to the 1810 1815 level i don't think much more than that uh, i don't think it's quite ready to break the uh 18 level so 18 1850 and the 1850 is now this week once again or yesterday once again proved uh, just that kind of making a bit of a top but i think 18 will hold so 18 1850 and on the wide 1750 1850 is the band that we're looking at for the rest of the year but short term 18 1850 Okay, Andre, so let's wait for Paul and the rest of the team out of the Fed and all the smart monetary policies to make their decisions, and then we will catch up again next week. Yes, and then hopefully by next month or in September, uh, we would be able to sit here and talk about good news for the South African consumer. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks.